Hello there! In this video, we're going to be talking about my sim rig setup and how I've set my sim rig up for both flight simulation and driving simulation. All on one rig. I don't need to take anything off. I don't need to add anything. I could just move my seat and I can get driving or I can get flying, which is super handy for me because I like to play both flight and driving simulators and I also like to live stream them all from this one place due to my camera setup and lighting and everything. So hopefully this video will answer the question of how I got the flight sim stuff on my sim rig in a way that works for those of you that keep asking over and over again. Welcome back to the Gamer Muscle YouTube channel. Click that like button and subscribe. Now, before I get talking, let's first of all do a really cinematic pan of the equipment. And uh, I'll leave the external view on so you can see how, uh, how, uh, what it takes to achieve pro steady cam. So here we go. We're going to pan across the rig here. Look at this. Look at this shot, guys. Yes, we are using a SimLab P1X cockpit here. And for those of you that don't know, SimLabs make T-slot cockpits. Now, what is T-slot, some of you might ask? T-slot is this metal stuff, aluminum, aluminium, that um, has slots in it and uh, allows you to basically position anything however you want. It's super versatile and it's literally the best stuff you could possibly have for any type of simulator because you could basically add, adjust and do whatever you want with it. And Sim Labs uh, sell pre-configured sim racing T-slot sim rigs where they also have their own best boke plates and stuff, uh, pedal mounts and uh, wheel mounts and everything else. But uh, yes, this is a Sim Lab P1X cockpit along with a Sim Labs monitor stand um, that's the rig we're using but what i have done in order to make this work is i have added an arm on the left here which has my go xlr on it uh, and this is just a, it's just a, a t-slot bar mounted here with two two points there and then that also has the thrustmaster hotas warthog throttle attached to it uh, at the end here and on the other side, I have a Brunner force feedback joystick. Now, it's a bit hokey cokey how this is being added to the rig because I haven't got the exact right mounting stuff. Basically, <laughs> I've, ad I've adapted some pedal plate mounts and uh, then, th then the uh, Brunner's been bolted onto that. So it's totally solid. This is a force feedback joystick, so you want it to be totally solid. But basically, if you had any joystick, you, you know, you could just get a... Uh, the, the arm here is the actual... It's the, this is the arm that comes with the SimLab cockpit in terms of the um, for shift as a handbrake and stuff you just you just add uh, you just add your joystick to that with a bracket and you can attach it on so for example this is a Thrustmaster Warthog joystick plate I'm using the thr Thrustmaster joystick on my Brunner joystick on my Brunner base <laughs> this is the plate from that you could you could always mount the uh, Hotas Warthog joystick using the holes that are there on a bit of T-slot and then I'd angle it away from you slightly if you've got it at the side um, put my mouse mat there and then I have my two mice on top of this. Why do you have two mice? I have two mice because one of my mice is for the streaming PC and one is for my gaming PC. So really, it's actually quite simple. It, we've just added the thruster to the left hand side and the joystick to the right hand side. Now, you, some people want to put a joystick in the middle coming up, which is probably more authentic for certain types of fighter jet and everything. But it does mean that it gets in the way if you're doing sim racing and other stuff. So this setup is kind of like a, an Airbus setup, <laughs> in a sense. But it basically means that um, I can go from flight sim to driving sim just by moving the seat forwards. So when I'm driving simming, the seat goes forwards. And when I'm flight simming, the seat goes backwards. And it all lines up really nice and comfy. And with this Sparco r33 seat which uh is one of the few driving sim seats that has a uh, tilt on it you can then adjust the back to get it exactly how you want to and i would say for this setup to work if you've got a bucket seat then you're out of luck <laughs> you don't want to do this with a bucket seat you really want to have some kind of seat that has tilt on it and uh, personally i'd always say go for a seat that has tilt on it on a sim rig because you know you're not you're not in a bloody race car and uh, you're going to want something that's adjustable and more comfortable. That's my view anyway. 
I don't know if not everyone necessarily shares that view, but uh, that's that's what I think. So uh, this probably will only work with a seat that has an adjustable rear on it. Now, some of you will be going, oh, but what about your rudder pedals? Well, let me answer that question. The rudder pedals are achieved using our Fanatec V3 pedals at the moment. Now, the reason for that is that the Thrustmaster pendular rudders, rudder, rudders, rudder pedals, unfortunately, the, they don't fit in the gap there unless it was higher up, in which case it doesn't make sense with this seat. Um, I'm looking to adjust that in the future, make it possible by using a pedal slider and some shenanigans, but I haven't been able to do it just yet. And also for the pure convenience of literally just being able to get in and fly or drive and switch between the two, using your driving simulator pedals and using the tip that I said in the uh, video about three or so videos ago, I've got a, a guide on how to use your driving sim pedals as rudder pedals, it works with all simulators. Doing that works perfectly fine, it's fine. You could just do that and you can use the brake pedal as a brake in your simulators. It's fine. Sure, if you're training to be a real pilot, maybe it's not fine. But uh, for most people, it's fine. So uh, yeah, that's the, the rudder pedals achieved with the Fanatec V3 pedals. Now, some of you might be curious for my rig in general, outside of how we've got it to work with flight sims uh, and driving sims. Um, we up, up here, we have the uh, camera for my face capture, which is a Sony uh, A6400. And so as, as you guys will point out, that is total overkill for a webcam. It is, it's stupid, but I needed one for work. I wanted to get it set up. That's my excuse. Hopefully I'll probably at some point get a secondhand lower end one like the A1500, swap it over, and uh, then I'll use this as a, my, as a photography camera and other stuff. But that's just what it is for right now. Oh, and, and if, you're, if you're wondering, it's mounted onto the uh, monitor stand via a small rig arm and a SimuCube hat that's resting upon it. On the back of there, we've got two uh, 30 watt LED warm white light bulbs. And then the screen up here is obviously for my streaming PC. So uh, I can monitor what's going on through OBS, what's recording, what's happening. And then my chat is normally on the left hand side when I'm live streaming or any other information. Of course, we have the Fanatec podium direct drive wheel on the uh, plate there. And I just leave that there. I just take the wheel off it when I'm flight simming. Uh, and uh, that's that's a very nice piece of equipment that works fantastic for driving simulators. For those of you who don't know, you, you've got interchangeable wheels. There's one over there, and uh, I've got one down here around the back. <laughs> um, then the shifter's over there, and uh, actually, nicely, if you've got a sequential shifter in Microsoft Flight Simulator, you can bind those as buttons, and you could maybe use them for flaps, or you could use them for the throttle, or whatever you want. So, you know, um, that's the nice thing of having everything plugged into a singular rig. But, uh, you know, to be honest, that is pretty much how, how it works and how it's done. Uh, all it is is just a case of getting the T-slot and then just aligning it to where it makes sense for you to then be comfortable in your sim rig and uh, hoping that the throttle unit you've got and the joystick unit you've got has uh, the, the mounting holes to allow you to then position it as well. I'm sure you could build custom plates if you wanted to but uh, I didn't, we've just finangled it. Now also the, the cable tidy is absolutely horrendous on this rig, apologies for the cables being a mess. The excuse I'm gonna use is that the uh, I'm always adding and removing stuff, tweaking things, changing things, doing bits and bobs, so there's no point in doing super tidy cables. If you weren't a YouTuber and you didn't review different things, then you could just tidy all your cables up perfectly, get the right length cables and everything, and you, you know, you're never gonna need to touch it again. I am touching everything all the time, so the tidier the cables are, the more annoying it gets in some ways. Also, pointing it out there, this is the Elgato Stream Deck. That's very handy for live streaming, recording videos. As you can see at the moment, it's on my profile for video recording because that's how I'm capturing my audio is through my headset, which, plugged, which is plugged into the Go XLR. Um, so uh, that's awesome. You can set that up with buttons for Microsoft Flight Simulator or your driving simulator if you weren't using it for live streaming. Even if you did use it for live streaming, you can set a profile so you can also use it for buttons for driving simulators, macros and everything else. Fantastic bit of kit. They also do a small one, which doesn't cost as much. And uh, also we have our, we have our, uh, our um, keyboards here, one for the actual gaming PC and one for the streaming PC. And this can rotate around, but the 
throttle quadrant uh, does block it eventually, but uh, it rotates enough that I can use it perfectly fine. So all was good and happy on the sim rig. Woo! <laughs> So, um, yes, I mean, that is pretty much it, really, in terms of how we've achieved this multi-dextrous, super-duper amazing sim rig. All in one place, race and fly, everything. All possible. All dreams are possible. Um, but that's about it, guys, for this video, you know. Um, let me know what if there's anything I've missed or if you want me to go into more detail with stuff. I wanted this to be as quick as possible, so I've, I've basically wrapped this <laughs> speed talk your way through it um hopefully it's helped you guys uh click that like button subscribe and uh until the next game of muscle video keep cool happy tea drinking goodbye <laughs>